If the Indians had a word for paradise, that's what they would have used to describe this part of uh, Northwestern California. It's an incredibly diverse watershed. This is the third largest river system in California. However, it is the largest system with a full wild run of Chinook and steelhead. The eel has one of the best chances to restore Pacific salmon populations in the entire West. Our rivers are the arteries of the earth, forming a heartbeat that sustains the continuance of life. Located in a remote and rugged part of Northern California, runs the mighty Eel River, one of America's greatest hidden treasures. My name is Shane Anderson. I'm a fisherman turned filmmaker who found hope and inspiration on the eel over a decade ago. What I found was a recovering, forgotten river where wild salmon and steelhead were returning in numbers I'd never seen on any Pacific River in my lifetime. The eel used to be a place where people from all over the United States and California would come to to fish for salmon and steelhead because of the abundance. They just persevered through everything. The salmon are the heroes of the eel that bring the river to life as they swim under some of the largest redwood trees left on Earth. They have weathered decades of abusive logging, overharvest, catastrophic floods, and a dam that was built without fish passage to divert water out of basin. But now, the river and the fish may have met their biggest challenge yet. It's true. The eel's totally dry. History was repeating itself, as humans were taking more than the river could handle. Decades of recovery were set back from the combination of a changing climate, a mega drought, and two multi-billion dollar industries of weed and wine. The real purpose of those dams and the tunnel has always been to take water from the eel, not for energy production, but to irrigate. It's just been a place of take, take, take. The environment's not the concern. People are here to make money. Our first major issue is water diversion. There's only so many straws you can stick in the cup before the cup runs dry very quickly. The lack of flow in cold water six months a year increased toxic algae blooms which made the river unfit to swim. There were outbreaks and parasites that were blinding salmon. Invasive species were thriving and dried up streams were killing small fish. I set out on a journey across the 3,600 square mile watershed to rediscover hope and new ways of living with the river, where ecology and economies can sustainably coexist. This property is a watershed conscious property. Our tiny little cell in this giant organism is, is, is playing a role in either the success or devastation of our own community and our own environment. Hope still resides for the Eel River and its wild salmon. With a growing movement of regenerative and sustainable farming practices, habitat restoration projects, progressive forestry management, new environmental regulations through the legalization of marijuana in California, an upcoming federal relicensing of the dam that diverts water out of basin and blocks over 150 miles of cold water streams and salmon habitat, and a community of stakeholders coming together to find creative solutions for water use that work for commerce and the ecosystem. If we can keep the salmon healthy and the habitat healthy, then we're doing it right for ourselves. Will we let this American treasure and California's beacon of hope for wild salmon recover? Or will we once again repeat history and go too far? <laughs>